بعتبر حالي ناشط من اجل بناء السلام واقول من اجل بناء السلام هذا يعني المكان ليس فقط لبنان انما كل العالم باعتبار ان السلام لا يتجزا من يسعى الى السلام في اي نقطه من العالم هو ساعي الى السلام العالمي نحن بنشتغل على التخفيف من حده النزاعات على تحويل الصدمات من صدمات عنيفة إلى نزاعات فلتكن عقلانية بدل أن تكون هدامة نتحول بها لتكون بناءة إلى الأفضل وإلى الأحسن نعمل على توفير البدائل السلمية لحل النزاعات الصدمية Most of the time now I'm not training as used to be like for the last I joined this project like uh, eight months ago, mm -hmm. but uh, definitely like for the previous maybe 13, 14 years, I was working heavily in training with consultancy. I left Lebanon at the end of the war, exactly at the end of the war. Two months later, after the Taif agreement was signed, and I left, I had finished university, and I went to uh, seek more uh, studies in peace building and conflict resolution and negotiation. And that's where I landed, and that's where I studied, and I started working in, uh, through NGOs and UN agencies in Africa with peacekeeping missions in the region, in uh, Southeast Asia, in, uh, uh, in the Caucasus, in Europe, and I had worked in the US. On with multiple audiences on a variety of issues, of issues I'm training all the way to uh, track to negotiation processes and peace agreements. Uh, my initial specialty was on ethnic conflict and uh, political uh, uh, power sharing. Okay. I, get it. If, uh, uh, I like that a lot. I also work with youth, I work with military, I work with uh, NGOs, with the government, with uh, civil society, and in all audiences, but I think I found most of my passion, my heart in political issues. Okay. Right now I work globally on issues of transition in some conflict countries in the region, okay. including national dialogues, uh, negotiation of social contracts, and the conflicts that they might engender, uh, and how you might be able to have uh, peace building safety nets to such uh, processes, or okay. fragile processes. Okay. So that's basically in a nutshell what I do. Perfect. Uh, of course, and with all of this, I've done a little bit of uh, work on governance and conflict, uh, policy making, conflict, public policy, uh, and issues of participation, but that's any uh, part of the, uh, that's details. Basically, since 96, we've been doing uh, three things. We've been doing training, intervention, and uh, coaching, obviously, mm -hmm. in the field of conflict management. We work with uh, three sectors. We work with uh, NGOs, civil society, and community groups. We work with corporate, and in certain cases, we work with some governmental organizations such as the Ministry of Social Affairs, Ministry of Human Rights in Morocco, Ministry of Planning in Jordan, and all this. With these three, three what we have done for the past 16 years is uh, mostly training in conflict transformation, communication, mediation, facilitation, uh, collaborative management. Second is we actually done community interventions. We've actually done reconciliation projects between groups, between municipalities, between villages, between regions, between NGOs, uh, youth groups, university clubs. Yes, maybe it's positive or negative. project it's heavy for 24 7 really that like even now like i'm talking to you i received like, some like a phone call related to the war itself you know at any time you know i can receive like 10 11 p.m first because of the work is very demanding definitely uh, and sometimes i have to come even if i'm sick i have to continue writing with, uh, some reports uh -huh. Uh, review some minutes, uh, check about uh, follow-ups, you know, some emails, some whatever. So work doesn't end when the, you know when I leave the office. So I think to, to see that a lot of accumulated uh, uh, emails or because I couldn't see during uh, my day work. Mm -hmm. 
since I was like, uh, busy with a lot of meetings. Called, yeah. so. Another part, as you mentioned, it's about the nature of work. It's not uh, like, uh, like from eight to, to five, or you know, and it's all the noise. It's, it's not. It's not about the time you spend at the invest. It's about some kind of deliverables you are expected to, to, to complete. It's yes. Not, yes. It's not about uh, only time. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, deliverables are. You know, demand much more than the time and the energy and efforts. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe plan for this. And the third is about maybe me, because I am interested in this kind of work. Uh -huh. When you do this kind of work with sort of passion, desire, and interest, you invest more. You don't invest all the time and energy. You really invest some kind of feelings, uh, you feel you're seriously invested in this kind of world. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, it, it, it's very humbling, in a way, what you do here. Yeah. When you work in ethnic conflicts, devastation, people have lost a family and come, exactly. to the, and come and want to be really in a mediation and uh, work through and end this suffering. Yes and no, and yeah. sometimes, you, yes, you, there is work that needs to be done, and, or there is thinking that needs to be done, or there is processing of the experience okay. that needs to be done, that I do take with me everywhere, not okay. just home, and in the shower, and uh, sometimes it's really thinking about it. Okay. Uh, a question I could not answer, okay. and that you think about answers for it. Uh, it's always a, a constant uh, thing you do, and I think this kind of work is really a way of life. Yeah. It's not a job. And you can't go and try to make peace and then come back and be a different person. It's something that you have to keep thinking about. Yes, we do. And I've, learned, I've seen that two ways. I've seen it taking it personally, mm -hmm. the personal growth, the personal learning of each of our interveners. Mm -hmm. And second, organization. We have collective memory. Uh -huh. We've matured. We've matured individually doing these interventions. We've also matured as a team. Mm -hmm. The first village reconciliation we did was trial and error. Uh -huh. The second one was a bit more informed. Third one, we had a method to our madness. Fourth one, we had a system. So we matured as an organization, we matured as an intervention method. We matured as individuals. Nice. We could see people who were coming out of that, becoming more into transformational thinking themselves. Nice. You know, the Chinese say, when you build a house, the house also builds you. Mm -hmm. So the, the tougher the, the houses were, the more the learning was. And I found more maturation with the guys. Uh, yeah, the thing that I did was two things. First, I did something. 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 So whatever personal problems usually they pale in comparison to uh, great suffering that has been in front of me. But uh, with, with that being said, the other side of the coin also is that you learn to separate that kind of work from your personal life. Even though you live peace building, you think peace building all the time, but you try as much as possible not to let it interfere in the way you run things. Sometimes you have to draw the line. You have to say, okay, I need to stop thinking about this. And the more you do it, the more you develop a thick skin. And the first few experiences, they're always devastating. They're always, you can keep thinking about it. But exactly. then the more you do, just like a, someone who's training to be a doctor, you uh -huh. see blood the first time. Uh -huh. It's horrible. You see blood again. It's less horrible. Then you come back and your shirt is full of blood and that's normal. You change, take a shower and leave. Okay. And I don't mean to say this to say that we are heartless. We found Rafi, that we could not go back into another project without digesting and processing these because they were not simple trainings, they were not simple dialogue projects, they were interventions, multi multifaceted, multi-faced, and we had to direct, we had to digest them. And we learned that pre-work, preparation work, sensitizing group selection was very important. We were kind of doing that fast forward before. Get a ten, ten people from this village, get ten people from that village, let's start. No, we, we started learning how to screen people, how to prepare the atmosphere, how to introduce the concept of dialogue in 
for example, we found one of the disturbing points, we never used, we never started using reconciliation as a word. We found that that was a turn-off. Yeah. And that for some people intellectually was disturbing. Mm -hmm. They had come from their international degrees and conflict resolution studies. Reconciliation is a sacred word. It's the mission. Well I just have a soul the Ashkas Mutalimim. بشعر بهيدا السترس، بشعر اني ما عم بقدر اني اكون انا ما عم بقدر اقوم بالمهمه يلي بعتقد انا خلقت من شانها بعتقد هيك، هي حاله نزاعيه بذاتها انا بعيشها مثل ما اي انسان بعيش حالاته نزاعيه، مثل ما انا بجرب اني اعطي الامل للاخرين فالامل لازم يكون عندي، فهي كيف انا عم بتعامل مع حالي من هون السلام مع انسات هو اولا، بعتقد هيدا هو السلام مع انسات يلي بيقدر يخلي الانسان بنفسه بروحه بفكره برؤية تبعيته الامل على طول موجود كل يوم تطلع الشمس وكل يوم بتغيب. At the beginning it's useful but on the long run it's unhealthy because regardless of who's doing that work whether me or someone else might burn out yes. and this is really unhealthy and we should watch out Okay. Reflect and then balance between the work and the personal needs and really, really, I mean, you know, like for myself, mm. I feel like detached big time from pre my previous social life mm -hmm. as a very social and interactive person with a lot of friends and surroundings and colleagues so to be detached suddenly and be overwhelmed. It wasn't so. On the time at the beginning, it wasn't easy because I had to learn many things at the time. Okay. Rules, regulations, new people, mm. understanding their capacities. Because as I told you, I have different hats. Yes. I had my peace building background as a content person mm -hmm. I to add, to, you know, to this project. And also, I'm the project manager. I have to do all the managerial tasks that are really consuming. <laughs> and now we find we can't use the word. It was disturbing. Yeah. So we had to be smart, reformulate, redigest. We had to, because if we did not take that time to process, we would have been in a deep trouble. we would see some of our guys going beyond empathy into sympathy. Exactly. That's where we used to do reality checks. That's where we do co-coaching, co-reality checking. Burnout, no, but, but going beyond empathy, we saw it happen a few times. Um, I oh. guess uh, the scheduling of projects, mm -hmm. giving enough time to, uh, to prepare, and then giving enough time to analyze, and then what we learned to do, Rafi, is to let go of control. Mm. We would get these come, get these youth groups or village groups and have a coordination committee from them. Uh -huh. We learned to take the back seat. So we, the intensity, the spotlight, we would stop being on us, we would put it on them. So ours would be follow-up, support, going and holding accountable, fixing it if something breaks, keeping them process, but not leading anymore. We would let them lead it. And some of them let it, some of them didn't. Mm -hmm. But what we did is not to burn out and not to take over engagement and over identification. We learned across the line not to do it ourselves, mm -hmm. not to take a cons consistent leadership. It was a phase by phase leadership. We would lead in the planning, lead in the, in the dialogue projects, and then have them set up post dialogue mm -hmm. projects. Pro joint projects. One was joint forestation, the other was joint uh, building of, of churches and religious sites which each other had burned. Nice. Wow. But they would they would choose it, not us. We wouldn't even suggest it. They would do it. We would just facilitate it and then get a committee and let them go. So all these we learned through the way by trial and error. Don't economize on skip on the on the team of intervention. Mm -hmm. We were doing it at the beginning two, three, then we went up to three, four people. When you have three or four a team, they don't all have to lead. The intervention team can be three or four. Mm -hmm. And it's good to diversify genders, religions, backgrounds, specializations. Why? When you have three or four people, first we were starting with two. Then we went to three or four. Three or four can help balance all these factors. Second, balance the pressure mm -hmm. on the team. 
diffuse the pressure, the psychological pressure, and hold each other aware of each other's work. Watch each other's back, watch each other. We used to support each other a lot. When you're two attacked are teams, working in teams, well-balanced teams, balancing gender, balancing age, and whatever is the conflict that you're intervening in. If it's sectarian, it's not a sectarian balance. If it's gender, you should have a gender balance. If it's, uh, if it's uh, ethnic, you should have an ethnic balance, or completely ethnically neutral from that group. One is the, the group constituency. Second is, uh, I would say, the scheduling of projects. You can't overdo it. You can't over-schedule projects. you got to give time to always plan and digest. The third, the intervention method should be very, very participative. A peace building guest, you do everything. You set up the home, you do the cooking, you set the dinner, but then they eat it and they invite you to dinner at the end. This is peace building. Attitude, the last one I would say is attitude is don't take ownership. It's not yours, it's theirs. If they want to do it, let them do it and they can guide you. At the end, it's their conflict. You're going into their body. Another fifth point I would say technically it might be a might be a technique to... Uh, we also learned to, to cushion, cushion, um, cushion any project by phases. يمكن أهم سؤال هو في يقول هون ليش رايح بالأساس أنا رايح لحتى أعمل لحتى أكسب خبرة مع لأنه أنا دراستي بهالمجال لأنه أنا عم حقق ذاتي ليه أنا رايح في في سببية إذا بشوف حالي إنه أنا ليه جيت على هذا المجال بشوف إنه آه يمكن آه ظروف كثيرة دفعتني واحد منهم الألم يلي مريت فيه و... والانتقام في له اوجه يعني كل فعل له رد فعل هيدا الانتقام هو فعل هنالك فعل حصل بحق انسان ما وقرر هالانسان يعمل قرر يعمل رد فعل اوقات بيكون بقرار اوقات ما بيكون بقرار اوقات بيكون تلقائي انما جرب بيحط عليه عقل لرد الفعل هيدا ويستثمره ايجابي يكون مسيطر على نوع رد الفعل اللي هو عنده اياه فأنا من الأشخاص اللي مروا بحرب عشت حرب يعني بكل أبعادها وأصابنا التهجير وحسيت هاي التجربة بذاتها صنعت مني إنسان جديد يمكن آه ما بعرف يمكن لو ما عشت اللي عشت فيه يمكن كنت غير إنسان يمكن كنت غير إنسان وما يمكن ما كنت حطيت هاجس السلام أساسي بحياتي بس آه طالما صار علي هالفعل فلقيت انه هيدا الفعل هو فرصه لإلي تكتشف حالي، اكتشفت حالي انه انا اصلح ان اكون في هذا الاتجاه، طالما قادر اني سيطر على رد الفعل تبعولي واجعله سلمي، قادر هالسيطره ذاتها اني طلعها من هذا الفرد واعممها على الافراد عم بعانوا يلي انا عني عانيته. يمكن اكتشفت مع الوقت انه هيدي الحياه، الحياه هي اسود ابيض، الحياه هي الم وراحه. هي آه يمكن حياة وموت بقدر نشوفها هي أن تكون موجود وأن لا تكون موجود يعني تحدي دائم طيب آه يعني لقيت ما شفت حالي إنه هون جات اكتشفت مرة تانية إنه هيدا التحدي اللي أنا عشته آه هو تحدي الحياة كلها بس سأب آه يعني الانطلاقة هي من هون وممكن اي انسان ينطلع من اي مطرح ثاني يوصل كمان لهون. يعني فهون انا بقول يمكن كثير مهم لاي انسان عم بناضل وعم بجرب انه يحقق ذاته يجرب ما يعيش الرؤيه النهائيه المشهد النهائي يعني يكون مسعى ليوصل له بقدر ما يكون عم يسعى يوم بيوم، دائما الانسان عليه يكون عنده عين النصر وعين الضفدع، اثنين بحاجه لهم، واني روح على مطارح ما بهاللحظات بتكون عم تعمل لي تعب، يمكن هون بريحني الرؤيه البعيده، انه انا واصل على شيء ما
for some colleagues, you can delegate. Mm -hmm. Delegation is one key for for success, and also not only for uh, definitely you can you know breathe a little mm -hmm. bit and maybe recover and think uh, to, to, to sustain your sanity. Yeah. Uh, also about how to do some time management, uh, some allocation, organization of some resources. You can hire people, consultants. If you, you know, it depends on the, the, on the nature of work. Yeah. With the UNDP, this leverage you don't have it as it used to be before because you're not the only decision maker. Or you, the decision making process is, you know, is totally different. Mm -hmm. You have different uh, factors, different players in this uh, decision making process. There is a concept called compassionate fatigue, I guess. Mm -hmm. And in this sense, uh, it's kind of transmitted trauma, or you know, from the work you do, and you know, you uh, you, be, you you become yourself part of the you know casualties or the yes. damage. So if you yourself not uh, in a wealthy situation, how can you offer help? And uh, I remember when I was working for the Red Cross a long time ago, and the first thing they used to tell us, make sure before saving anyone else to ensure your safety. Mm -hmm. uh, because we don't need additional pressure. You have to take things mm -hmm. from the work you're doing okay. and you have to be engaged in a different kind of work to travel, to do something really totally different to detach yourself from the work or you know, to look at things from the other time as if like uh, a new chapter in your life or whatever, you know mm -hmm. to exit a little bit this uh, uh, heavy load or stressful kind of work and move to something new, even if it's stressful, but different kind of stress, not exactly the same one. Okay. First of all, this kind of work is not iconic hit and run. Mm -hmm. It is a long process. So they should have the uh, long uh, lasting, enduring capacity and energy mm -hmm. to, to, to reach the goal. Perfect. Second, it should be also uh, uh, accompanied with some uh, persistence and modesty, a combination of perseverance and modesty, because you're going to face a lot of challenges and troubles of things. But at the same time, you can overcome you know, many of these challenges not only by force, but by really so you can penetrate to keep this heart. So, so it's so not words rather than forcing your, even if you're right, even if you're, you know, forcing your, mm -hmm. your point. How to maneuver around things rather than uh, put your head against the wall sometimes because you, at the end, we're dealing with people. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And it's not going to be easy for people to Yes. Not talk friendly, honestly, openly. So you have to be, if you're coming, even if you're right, and coming with a, an elegant voice, so they might not open up. What, with compassion and fatigue, usually we talk about this maybe in trauma, meaning, or you know, when, you're, when you're dealing with any humanitarian kind of work, with massacres, with, and just kind of sympathy, support, association with those victims you feel more affected. Mm -hmm. This is probably the origin of it. But the issue is not only in this, but the same symptoms you can feel, see it in other cases, even with people working in a, in a different domain, or not close, but like peace building and overwhelming, you know, 
kind of work. You can burn out just because you're working hard and you're not giving right time and fair time and the quality time for yourself, for your really social life, mm -hmm. interaction, family, or whomever. And what I think here, as I mentioned again, you know, you should protect yourself. You should ensure your sanity. You should ensure your well-being. Well, some people would go to sports, others to travel, uh, you know, people mm -hmm. exit to switch, to, to, to reset, to move from the context you're in mm -hmm. into something else and then maybe you can work and function better. Definitely you should change the context, okay. but sometimes not anything, because anything ah, is open okay. for all options yeah. and worse. <laughs> we don't want to options. be that open, I get yeah, it. Exactly. Okay. <laughs>
and meditation, whether uh, it's psychological or not, but really has helped me hugely. So Loss of sleep, uh, uh, ulcer, basically bleeding, uh, stomach, uh, bad enough, bad appetite, uh, extreme irritability. All of this was, uh, and more than one doctor said, "Fine, you cure the blood." Uh, uh, the, the, definitely, I almost quit. Yeah. Okay. I took, a long, I took a long and unextended unpaid leave from my job and I needed to fix myself. And, uh, I wasn't married and I was living in a foreign country. So, and I did it. Uh, in that three months of summary, I, yeah, I did something about it. Uh, and thankfully, it was, that worked really well for me. Very nice. Uh, it cost me a relationship with my girlfriend, it cost me a lot of that is still at least. And it, uh, no, no, I have more balance then. I, I can read the signs at least. I can see when it's reaching somewhere uh, that I have to stop or pull out or apologize or take time to myself or whatever. Uh, and again with my son, it's definitely a wonderful thing, different thing altogether. Yes, I mean, you definitely have to be able to read yourself or at least manage it well or know when it is there so you can uh, know the stressors, know the the, the, the buttons that you that when they're pushed, خلص. You, yeah, you have to do that. Yeah, and for example, when you work at peacekeeping missions and you used to this in Africa, the force you to take the R and R. Whether you like it or not, we force you to take it. I used to when I used to work in this I would always say, Oh that's easy. I am a survivor of civil war fifteen years. Of course I can take no you can't. Okay. Uh, it's uh, very internalizing, it's very taxing, it's very you have you tend you have a tendency to keep it in and that's completely unhealthy. Extremely unhealthy. When I uh, developed the ulcer I uh, for a year I lost my appetite where well, that was a horrible feeling. Well, I should have uh, stupidly ignored a lot of the uh, warnings that, I, that my body was giving me. And, uh, but it's not about resilience, it's about the survival mechanisms that we learn in the war. And I, um, I didn't pay attention to this until my Jordanian wife, 2006 for example, when the Israelis attacked. Uh, I immediately went and put tape on the windows, uh, stocked up on bread, on fuel and stuff, so because the survival food. kicked in. Then my wife said, how did you think of all of this? I didn't. That's what we always did during the war. I got batteries, I got UPS, I got stuff, and uh, uh, even the, uh, yeah, the batteries for lights and stuff. Yeah. All of this. And I packed all my passports in one small uh, pouch and a 15 kilogram bag, travel bag, so and it was ready. Case, yeah. So she thought, and I'm not sure, did you research it on the internet or what? Or, hey, that's what you always did yeah. during the, uh, the war. So definitely they have more probably uh, skills, they're better skilled at survival. Or at, uh, at could be reactive. But I definitely would not recommend someone saying, oh, I, am, I have more endurance than others. Yeah. That's not necessarily true.